Welcome to TVS Pro. I'm Ted Bollinger and today we're in the upstairs home theater demonstration area where we are comparing two projectors. On your left side we're looking at the new JVC LX NZ3B which is a laser DLP projector at under $3,700. On the right side we're we're looking at the Epson, the very popular 6050UB, which is a lamp-based projector, but has a retail price of around $39.95. So not exactly the same price, but they're in the same ballpark. So let's see how these two projectors compare. Okay, as you can see, they're both uh, now in their brightest HDR. This is a signal we're getting from the HDR10 um, calibration disc. We've calibrated these projectors. They're actually very, very close to each other to the eye. Cameras always picks up slight differences that we don't see with the eye, but they are very, very close, especially if you look up at the grayscale there. Now, the Epson is in the high power consumption, which is the high lamp mode. It's in bright cinema. so. Uh, that's its brightest mode till we start to give up color accuracy, which we'll do in just a minute. That's the spec that they actually put on the paper. And then the JVC is in the variable high. So we'll measure these in this mode because this is HDR. And here you should be able to see we're getting 60.9, uh, 60.4, 60.5, 60.6, 60.7. We are getting 72.2, uh, 72.3. So the JVC is a little bit brighter, and when you're comparing, and it should be, it's specified higher, the, the laser specified at 3,000 lumens. When you're comparing HDR, we really want very close brightness, and these are also a little louder in their brightest mode. So we're going to put the JVC into the low, um, variable which allows us to get the best blacks out of the projector as well and then we're going to put the the Epson we're going to put in the medium power consumption and it'll quiet down considerably when it goes into that mode uh, you probably won't hear it because the microphone's on me but if we measure these now this is where we'll be comparing the HDR and in HDR in medium this is coming in at 48, 47, and the JVC is coming in at 51, 52, so within a few foot candles of each other. Okay, to measure maximum brightness, which is how the projectors are normally rated on a spec sheet, we're going to take them out of their best color modes. We have now put in the Spears and Munsell. Um, non-HDR, non-4K disc, so they're not going into the HDR mode. And we're going to move the uh, JVC. Uh, they both measure about the same now as they did in HDR mode. Uh, they're right around 49 to 52. And now we're going to put the JVC into the natural mode. Or excuse me, we're going to take it out of the natural mode, that's what it was in, and put it in the dynamic mode. Now this will go significantly brighter when it comes back on and then we're going to get rid of the menu you will notice you should be able to see that there is a greenish yellowish tinge and the JV or the Epson will do the same thing when we go to the dynamic so dynamic mode is its brightest mode you can now see that they are both and and why would you use this mode this is if you have lights on you're you're having maybe a a football party and you just want to get the brightest image out of it um, and the color takes, so we're going to put this down here so you should be able to see it. We're getting 86, 85.4, and then over here on the JVC, we are getting 76, 77. So actually, um, the brightness between the two the, the Epson in a non-accurate color mode is actually putting out more brightness than the JVC, but in the um, better color mode, uh, we're actually getting more brightness out of the JVC, and that's not that unusual to see that happen in a projector.
Okay, now we've put both projectors, as you can see, in their brightest mode that has good color. So again, this is not their peak brightness mode, which goes a little off color, but this is in their brightest mode where you still get good color. In the JVC, that's called natural, and we're in the variable high lamp position. And on the JVC, as you can see, we're in bright cinema, and down here we're in the high lamp or high consumption mode. So if you look at those two pictures now, you'll see they're um, both very good color. They're slightly different in this mode. Um, and we didn't calibrate this, so the color will be a little bit off, but it's very respectable on both of those. I think if I were going to do a room with lights on, because that's plenty of bright, I think the, uh, the uh, Epson is now about 62, and the JVC was about 56, so they're both still plenty of brightness to do like 120, 150 inch screens with some lights on. Um, and this is similar to the HDR brightness mode, but this is still not HDR. But we wanted to give you an idea of what the color looked like on both projectors. Um, but this is basically out of the box in this mode. Um, but both of them are set to their brightest mode that they still get good, very reasonable color. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the color and specifically the differences between the JVC and the Epson, and there are some significant differences here. Um, in this first section, they're both HDR, but the Epson is in the bright cinema mode in the medium lamp position, and the JVC, uh, we chose this position, which is the low variable, because that's where it gets its best black level um, contrast detail in low level um, without getting too milky. And so uh, you can see uh, the reds are a little bit brighter, but they're about the same red. They both measured, we'll show you the results um, on the charts in a few minutes, but they both um, do essentially 98 to 99 percent of Rec. 709. Um, they both go beyond Rec. 709. Um, the JVC um, does a little bit deeper reds and a little bit deeper greens. Um, the Epson is very close to Rec. 709 when we look at the charts, but here what I wanted to show you, I'm going to turn the uh, menu on so you can see what we're doing. I'm going to change this to digital cinema. Now normally it would go darker, but because we're in medium lamp mode, we've programmed high lamp mode to be in here, so we should have very similar brightness. It's probably a little bit less bright. But if you look carefully at the colors, and I'm not sure how much of this is going to come through <coughs> after it's compressed, but the red is significantly richer and deeper in terms of color gamut. It's now very close to DCI-3. Uh, DCI is the motion picture standard for cinema. And that's one of the goals right now for 4K UHD discs is to reach that DCI P3 standard. Um, and I, we measured the uh, Epson at about 98%, and I believe the JVC was just under 60 because it doesn't use a cinema filter. So depending on which mode you have, um, the, the blues are very close, but a little bit better on the Epson. The yellows, the yellows on the JVC were actually quite good without the filter. With the filter, they're a little bit better. The cyan's a little richer, and the magenta uh, actually is pretty close. So there are some differences. Um, some people are more sensitive to color. I particularly am. Other people are not. But let's take some look at some images now. Before we take a look at some motion clips, we want to take a look at some reference clips. These, again, are on the HDR10 calibration disk. You've seen some of these images before. And I wanted to show you, we're now on the Epson, we're in the digital cinema mode, but even though it's in the high lamp, it's still not quite as bright as the JVC. So it's not a good comparison. I'm going to take this and we're going to put it back in the bright cinema mode. And even though the lamp uh, fan noise will go down a little bit because we're in the medium, the picture will actually be a little bit brighter. And that's really where we want to do our comparison. So here they're both very good images, even with the color filter removed on the Epson, they're more comparable. 
And if we go to uh, this scene of the barn in the forest, uh, or it may be a covered bridge, I'm not sure what it is, but um, the colors are good on both of them. Um, good detail. We'll take a look at detail in a separate section in blacks. I can see some differences here in some blacks. You may or not be able to see, but we'll cover that in another section. And here uh, we're taking a look at skin tone, and both are very respectable. Uh, and then we're going to move ahead here to the gal. I think she's a basket weaver, or is she? Uh, oh, she actually uh, looks like she's selling uh, vegetables. But this is a great one because the more wider color gamut that you have, the more contrast you'll see in her shawl. And here, with the color filter out so that they're about the same brightness, um, they both look really good, very close. We're a little bit further back than normal viewing distance because this room was originally set up for uh, HD and we're now 4K, so we should be up closer to where the projectors are. We're about four to six feet behind the projectors. Uh, but from here, they both look amazing. You really don't see a lot of difference in detail from this viewing distance. Uh, when we get into the detail section, there are some significant differences between these two projectors. But in terms of color, we're going to play a couple of clips now so you can see some uh, scenes from some movies, but they're both very good. To give you an idea of the skin tone color performance, um, again, the JVC's on the left, the Epson's on the right, and we've freeze frame this scene. We're going to play it here. And as it plays, you can take a look at the various, there's a light that's going on in the background or in the, what they're looking at. So you'll see some variations. But if you compare the left and the right side, it really is amazing how close, uh, when these are both calibrated to D6500, how close they track to each other. Uh, again, they're both exceeding Rec. 709, and when they're set up properly, we've set color levels, black levels, and white point so that they are, uh, and then we put them in the brightness modes to where uh, this is getting the best blacks out of the JVC and the Epson's in the middle position in bright cinema. Uh, but they both do an excellent job of color reproduction, as you can see, including skin tones. And even side by side, I would not have guessed that these two projectors would be this close. Okay, this is actually a gamma test, but we're going to be using it to compare blacks because it's only a 5% box in the middle of the screen. And at this level, which is about 70% right now, you're not seeing a big difference in black levels, but you can perceive that the Epson, anything above this, you can't see the difference because your eye sees the white and the contrast, which is good on both. But as we go below this, you'll start to see that the Epson, which it, with its deeper blacks, will begin there. You can start to see it very clearly on the camera. We saw it about two clicks ago with the eye. And as we go down in these lower levels, you should see a significant difference. There's actually more difference that we're seeing with the eye than what we're seeing. But that'll give you an idea. So the, the JVC has positioned itself as a media or a living room projector because in a dark room, and again, there's no lights on in this room, but this room is light, so it's still reflecting whatever's lights on the screen. So it would be even more pronounced in a completely dark room, which we're working on getting this eventually to that stage. But here you can see the difference between the black levels in the JVC and the black levels. And now we'll, we'll take a look at some content that you can actually see what we're talking about in terms of actual footage. But this is the test signal, some of them that we use. Here is a really good low-level scene that Chris Deering introduced us to. Uh, this is from The Revenant, and this is UHD disc, so this is 4K uh, with high dynamic range. And in this scene, um, very, very low light. Before we start this, I wanted you to look. If you look underneath the picture on both sides, you'll see that this JVC, this is the DLP version, does not quite equal the black that's on the right side of the picture. We've calibrated the plus, so both of these are getting their best black levels. Um, but as the scene plays, you'll see now this is a fairly bright scene here with the fire coming up, and yet you can still see a difference underneath the screen. But in a minute, they're going to go to these very dark scenes, and here you will see a significant differences in the depth um, that the picture has because of the better blacks, not only above and below the screen, but now with inside, and you're getting 
on the Epson because of its, the UB on that model number stands for ultra black and it's a special chip that they have developed for home cinema to get us the very best black. So there is significantly um, a difference in the way these two technologies have been implemented. Okay, what we're looking at here is from the Spears and Munsell disc. And this is showing us um, multiburst at various frequencies, which is the fine detail in the image. Now, both of the projectors have, been have had their shift turned off. So you're basically looking at two 1080p projectors, and the content we're looking at is 1080p. But I wanted to start here because we're going to move into 4K multiburst in a minute. But as we zoom in, we're going to concentrate on these two. I've reversed the picture on the right, the Epson, so that you can see the same two chips on the left. And as we zoom in here, you will notice that there is a significant difference between the two. And you may have heard me talk about depth of modulation. Well, this is a really good example. As we get into the higher frequencies, um, the blacks become gray and the whites become gray and that gives you a lower depth of modulation. So we're going to move the camera closer so we don't have to use this much magnification of the lens and hopefully you'll be able to see what happens when we turn the 4K enhancement on. Okay, so we've moved the camera closer and you should be able to see on both of these, this is the 1080p every other pixel or single pixel display. Um, there is a difference between the two, but on 1080p, it's not really significant. Each one of them does every pixel. The whites are a little bit whiter here, and here the black seem to be a little bit blacker, but it's, it's picked up a little bit of a gray tone. But what we want to look at right now to watch this switch is the pixels inside. So on LCD, this is called the screen door effect. You can see the pixels. But it's actually improved, so we're going to switch this to the 4K enhancement mode, and we can do that on a 1080p source. And you'll see that this now becomes much more dense, much more solid. We don't have nearly that screen door effect that we had in the past. So the 4K uh, shift that Epson is using definitely improves the picture. It smooths the image, and we don't really hurt our resolution in 1080p. Now we're going to do that same thing in the JVC, and in the JVC you'll notice um, that because DLP has a higher fill factor, the screen door effect is not as prevalent, although up close here I can see every single pixel, which will not be the case when I shift it. Now on the JVC, the shift is in a separate menu, and you, can only, you can't do this on an HDR source, but you can do it. Now it's going to go black, just like the JVC did for a minute, and then it's going to come back on. And so in this shot, um, we've changed the shutter speed, and they're both now in 4K on the Epson, they call it enhancement, and the DLP, they just call it UHD, but it's shifting the 1080p, the .47. This is the new version of the .47 chip but they're actually shifting it four different ways, so you actually have eight million pixels on the screen. So on 1080p content, they both are an improvement in terms of pixelization and smoothness over a normal 1080p projector. Um, so there is an advantage of getting a 4K projector over 1080p, even if you never watch 1080p, uh, excuse me, if you never watch 4K, because it does make the picture significantly smoother and more, more film-like, more solid. Okay, now we're looking at a section of the two projectors. Again, the Epson is reversed, so we'll be seeing the same portion of the screen. We've drastically changed the shutter speed so we don't get any strobing. And we're going to zoom in. You can see the shutter speed affecting the smoothness of the zoom. But as we get in close here, and we'll make sure that the camera is in focus, um, you should be able to see some of the differences that we're seeing here live. And again, um, the distance that the camera is now is a little bit closer than what you would normally watch. We're, uh, and it's zoomed in to where you would be about two to three feet from the screen, but we wanted to show you some of the differences. So on the right side, you're now seeing the screen door effect with its uh, 4K enhancement, so it makes kind of a grid pattern there. On the left side, the JVC, uh, is actually resolving the single pixel horizontal 
and vertical. In fact, let me move up here and I'll point out what we're talking about. So if you, if you look here carefully, there are horizontal lines and here there are vertical lines. Here, on the Epson side, we can't see those because we have equal horizontal and vertical, and that's because of the larger screen door effect, which is about 60 to 65 in an LCD. And on a DLP, we have a screen door effect of usually around 90 to 91. Some of them are as high as 92. They don't state on this particular chip. Um, but you are actually resolving one pixel, so we wanted to make that distinction. But what we're interested in, which we'll take a look in a minute, is what difference does that make in the actual content and can you see it at viewing distance? We've got here again, we're at slow shutter speed, um, so we're not getting any of that. We're gonna freeze this and as we zoom in, we're hoping that you can see what our eyes are seeing here. So the jerkiness is caused by the low shutter speed uh, and we're, we're zooming in very tightly because what we want you to see is some of the fine pixel differences and then we'll talk about those at viewing distance. But if you look at the, the lamp post, I'll walk up here so you can see what I'm talking about. This lamp post, if it's um, sharply focused and zoomed in enough, you'll see the pixelization, uh, which is really the screen door effect. Over here, because of the 8 million pixels, we're not seeing that, but what we are seeing um, and they both have a little of it here is this kind of red edge and this has a little bit of blue edge. That's chromatic aberration. This is three chip and uh, we didn't spend a lot of time on pixel alignment that may be able to be improved. But over here there is no alignment because you've only got one chip so that's strictly the lens itself. So we're, we're both getting um, a little bit of uh, softness to the image if you will or less than perfect image when you're in this close. But what's interesting, and I'll put this back in motion a little bit, is when it's actually in motion at viewing distance, the two, um, and this is somewhat surprising to us uh, because in the past we, we've seen the shifting, but it's usually been on the higher resolution, the 0.67 DLP chip. This is the new 0.47, and boy, I'll tell you, um, it is very, very close. I don't think anyone would be able to pick out one or the other in terms of detail or resolution between the, the JVC LX3 and the Epson 6050s. So um, detail and resolution, they're very close. Now we come to the HDR performance differences between these two projectors. And probably the black level differences and the HDR differences are going to be the biggest performance differences between these two projectors you're going to see because as you'll also see some of these images, it's very difficult to see any difference. So this is the Spears and Munsell UHD HDR benchmark calibration disc and it has some great test footage on it. So we're going to take a look. You see here that we can highlight the different um, when they when they do the color correction and the final grading, they can choose what level. And um, we're going to start with a thousand nits. And um, as you can see, this was uh, originally shot in 8K and then down res to 4K. So it is very pristine footage if you want to evaluate a projector. And as you look at these two, this is uh, again, our HDR section, so we're looking for the highlights, the detail in the shadows, and part of HDR is also the color which we've evaluated and the contrast. So now we're really looking at how it handles those highlights and lowlights. Now coming up is a scene here, we're going to freeze it on it uh, because we want to point out some of the differences. Now at a thousand nits, you'll notice that on both sides there, there are some very um, hard to see but because of the snowstorm there are uh, trees on the in the background and they're going up there now at a thousand nits both of both of these projectors handle this quite well but what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to that menu and this time we're going to look at it at 4,000 now 1,000 nit gradation and a 4,000 nit um, uh, Cal uh, not calibration, but it's, it's when they actually mix um, or grade the movies, color grading is where they set this, 
and 4,000 nits is uh, the brightest monitor that's available. It's, the, it's normally reserved for Dolby Vision, but they are doing it, as we'll look at in a minute, in a few movies like the Meg. So we're going to now put this into play at 4,000 nits. And one of the things we'll be looking at is, okay, the JVC has auto tone mapping, and that's not to be confused with dynamic tone mapping like we find in the NX5 and NX7. That dynamic tone mapping actually looks at the scene content and adjusts it dynamically throughout the movie. Auto tone mapping says, oh, what is this movie gradiated, graded at, graded, that's the word I keep missing, and what should it be at? So here comes our scene, and let's see if we can see any differences now. So the JVC, this is very hard to see. I don't know if you'll be able to see this at home, but the JVC, the auto tone mapping said, oh, okay, this is 4,000 nits. So we can still just barely see those pine trees in the background. The JVC cannot. Um, so then I thought, okay, well, let's see what we can do in manual um, override of that. So the JVC, if we go into the menu here and look at the information, if you look down here, you will see that there is a max fall uh, of 4,000, or excuse me, a max CCL of 4,000 nits and a max fall of 1660. So the JVC, the auto tone mapping, knows exactly what this is doing right now. It's recognized it and it's adjusted it. It's still a little overblown, so we should see if we can improve that. So we go down here to the advanced, and we go, okay, let's go to our HDR settings, and they have what they call picture tone. Well, unfortunately, we can't improve it. If I go to plus two, and the, the JVC will black out for a moment, then come back, you'll see it's now like the Epson. We've totally lost everything. But we found on our other scenes that the minus two was really good position for most movies, and in this case, and that's somewhat personal preference because the movie, the, the overall content does darken when you try to get those highlights. But as you can see, we now have those highlights. So let's see what control we have on the Epson. The Epson does not appear to do the auto tone mapping, but let's see how much control it has. So we'll go down here to the signal, and under dynamic range, you can see it's detected the HDR10, and we found on the other scenes we've been looking at that a setting of 9, it comes at 8 and we went a little bit darker. But now if we select that, we can start to bring in, we can actually bring in the fine detail and you should be able to see now these trees on these hills in the background. But if we play the movie from this point, you'll see that it's actually quite a bit darker. So it's, it's always a trade-off, but the reason we wanted to show that, and, and now I'm going to freeze this scene. This is a great detail scene. And we're going to take that back up to where it was. Most people are going to prefer the brighter image. So we had it at 9. And if you're actually setting this, I would probably set it about 12 to 14 because I don't want to give up all that brightness, but that's still a very good image. But if we put it back to where it was for the other movies that were graded at 1,000 nits, that's going to be a little overexposed. Okay, we're on the Spears and Munsell, the UHD HDR uh, benchmark calibration disc, and this is the test footage. We've moved it back now to 1,000 nits. That's where the majority of movies are being mastered at, and um, we have the JVC light mode as we've done in most of this comparison is now in the variable low. That's where we've found you get the best blacks out of it. And then on the, we'll shut that one off, and then on the Epson, uh, as you can see, we're in the medium. So both of them are uh, essentially in their middle or uh, most dynamic mode. Um, both of them could go a little bit brighter, but you'd give up some of the blacks to do that, as you, and we just simply don't need it. This is a 131-inch uh, Stuart reference, 130 um, screen, and it's lighting up the whole room. Of course, um, the room is fairly light, except for the carpet and some of the walls, but 
um, it would just hurt your eyes if you had to go any brighter. So I'm going to roll some of this footage and talk a little bit about it. But again, we're on, we're comparing HDR performance. So you see um, that log where the sun is hitting it directly. Um, here you see the highlights in the yellow of the feathers and the orange, the green. Um, there is one scene coming up uh, which has got a, uh, an, a bird with a lot of light on it. Not this one, but the next one coming up. Here you can see a little difference in the blacks, but it's even in person that's hard to see. But there is a scene coming up that I think you'll be able to see it a little bit. So in terms of HDR performance, if, if you didn't see these side by side, there you can see the, the slightly better blacks on the Epson. And here, possibly, but it, it is very hard because the eye sees those bright um, colors and detail in the foreground, in the background. Um, we just have a hard time really determining those black levels. And here you've got some nice smoke going through. Both of them are processing um, the 10-bit the signal coming off of the UHD 4K disc with amazing detail. But we wanted you to see this so that you could um, understand that both of these are capable of very good projector. That's probably the best one for seeing the blacks. And this one, by the way, I'll freeze this for just a sec. When um, both of these lost color in the beak and a lot of detail in the feathers when it was at 4,000 nits. Fortunately, there's not a lot of movies. The Epson, you could manually correct that. And the JVC, the tone mapping would help it. Um, so it's kind of a trade-off. The JVC, if you don't touch it, is going to give you a better all-around uh, HDR mapping because of the auto tone mapping, and it reads it, but it also tells you what it is. You can go into the menu and say, oh, okay, that's what I want to do. That's a stunning picture. I hope you can see that. Okay, we're going to take a scene from a movie that was actually color graded um, at, as you can see, 4,000, uh, where it says max CCL, that's 4,000 nits. That's what it was graded at. So we're going to take that menu off and we'll roll this. Um, so this is very, very bright and you'll see and, uh, as she comes underneath, and I'm going to freeze this here, the JVC, because of the auto tone mapping, knows that it's at 4,000. So it does a, a reasonably good job of trying to give you some detail in the cage that this gal is coming down into the ocean with. On the uh, Epson side, it's trying. It's at a, uh, we left it at 10 that we used in the uh, previous settings. Uh, 9 and 10 is where it really looked good, and the JVC is at minus 2, which is as far as it can go. Um, so if you were not to touch the uh, JVC, it would be a little bit better in terms of detail. But on the other hand, the Epson gives you the ability and more control. I can go here into dynamic range, go into HDR setting, which is really the brightness. And if I decrease this, we can actually get quite a reasonably good picture. Um, there we're seeing about the same amount of detail. We're picking up a little bit of color. And if I roll this, we'll see if, if it's gone too dark. Now there, um, that's a good scene. I'm going to back that up just a little bit there because you'll be able to see the difference in the clouds in the sky. Um, we're also, because the brightness is so high, we're washing out the color in the ocean and the clouds in the sky. If we were to bring the JVC down probably one more or two more, there you can see we've really got the clouds, we've got great color, but if we roll this now, the picture is going to be a little bit darker. So that's why that's that kind of subjective thing. Um, but in terms of when they graded it, it would have looked closer to what you're seeing on the right. But the um, the JVC, the auto, as you can see, is doing a pretty amazing job. Again, it's not dynamic. It's not changing. It's just read what the disk is and set it to that level. And I think most people on the JVC side would prefer to go up where we had it. Um, at least for most of the scenes at 10, that's about where they're balanced. So that's kind of the difference you'll see on an actual uh, 4,000 uh, nit graded movie. So in conclusion, we want to talk about some of the key differences between these. The Epson definitely has 
the advantage when it comes to deep blacks and contrast in low light level scenes in most bright level scenes and, and as we play this HDR content here Again, uh, on most of these scenes, they are so close to each other and they're both an amazing image. And from viewing distance, uh, the ideal for 4K, we could not see a significant difference, not actually any difference. We could up close, but it was very fine even then because of the two different characteristics. Um, so the Epson really is on equal footings when it comes to detail, even though it's four million pixels with its shift and the JVC's eight because of the lens on the JVC and the chromatic aberration and a little bit of the softness. Um, it's not as good a lens as the Epson, so they really come out almost the same. Um, the, the Epson does have the cinema filter, but unfortunately when you drop that cinema filter in, it drops the brightness even though we we're going to the high lamp mode when we did it, it still could not equal the, and, and most people, that we've showed it to would definitely prefer to have that cinema filter off because it darkened the picture. Um, the Epson is also going to be your best choice if you're a serious gamer. It has a much faster response time and uh, a better lens. It does have lens memory so you can do your 235 as well as your 16 by 9 and then the other big difference was the HDR. Even though the uh, Epson is not dynamic uh, tone mapping, uh, as is not the JVC. The JVC is uh, auto tone mapping, not dynamic. There's a big difference between those two. And we had more control, however, on the Epson. We could bring in any scene. We even tried 10,000 nit graded movies, which I don't think any of those currently exist because we have no 10,000 nit monitors. But they were able to do the content that high somehow on the demonstration disc and we could still pull it in on the Epson. So the range of HDR manual control is better on the Epson. Now on the JVC side, and both of these by the way are very bright, they're in the same ballpark even though the specs would indicate they're a little ways off, they are very, very close. Um, the JVC theoretically has better 4K detail and we could actually see that on the one pixel test pattern but at viewing distance you could not see that. So they're really, really close that way in terms of actual detail. The big advantage to the JVC is the laser. The laser gives you zero maintenance uh, because of the 20,000 hours and because it's sealed optics you don't have a filter to change and you should not run the risk of getting any contamination inside there. The other advantage to the laser is the brightness is generally more consistent on a laser. It does not drop in the first, hun well, 150 to 250 hours is where most lamps drop, and they can drop up to 20%, and then they level off, whereas the laser only drops to half in 20,000 hours. So very, very little uh, light loss and very consistent uh, brightness, and the color balance is a little better in that as well.